Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. You just got to keep working. No matter what's going on, just keep working. Persistence is one of the most important features of success, you know, uh, factors in success is being persistent. Keep working and, uh, you know, the main thing that's going on with me is traffic and trying to attract traffic to this site. I'm not really getting any traffic. I'm kind of just talking to myself mostly, I think. Maybe one or two other people. I have no way of knowing, you know, anybody's talking. There's, I, you know, I tr wanted to set up a some sort of conversation, you know, on the website so that people could call in and... You know, we could have like text conversations. What do they call that? Commenting, you know, comments. But uh, it just gets overwhelmed with spam. These computers, you know, just over, you know, and there's not, it's just garbage. So I, it's best not even to try that. So, or at least for me, you know, I'm not all that, I'm not, I am not Harvard and I am not. Hollywood. You know, I don't know how to use this equipment very well, so I don't have a really fancy introduction with all kinds of graphics. I w I'm kind of wanting to get to that. I hope I will get to that at some point, but right now it's pretty basic, and it's basically just the content of the stories. It's not the style, my writing style, or my video production, you know, is not the what the value in home office studio it's the content of the stories if you watch the videos on this website and read the stories all of them from start to finish start at the top left under home and read all them stories and just go work your way all the way through them it's going to take a while i mean it's pretty a lot of information and you read all them stories and watch all those videos, I guarantee you it's going to improve your life. No matter who you are, whether you're rich and, you know, and powerful and you have a lot of education, degrees, master's degrees, it, it doesn't matter. The content on this website is very valuable. And you just read it and you read it through it as fast as you can. Don't try to understand every detail of it because the details are not what's important. It's the big picture that's what's important that I, I'm giving, you know, telling you. The story I'm telling you is about the big picture. That's why I call it holistic home office. The details, you know, you're going to keep just when you finish reading this, you know, that's just the beginning of your education. You know, because what I hope to do is inspire you to love learning and uh, inspire you to seek the truth and, and investigate, you know, natural history and human nature and civilization and figure out how you can prosper in that civilization. The content of the stories is not necessarily perfectly accurate. I, you know, there's the details... You know, the, the big picture is the main point of my stories. I'm trying to give you a big picture. And there's a lot of details in here, and they're, they're mostly accurate. I'm just saying they're probably not perfectly accurate. So just keep that in mind. But keep reading the stories. Just read the stories all the way through as fast as you can. And then you'll be reading other stories and keep doing that. And it'll just add to everything else you know, and you'll learn other people that have more resources and they're, you know, trained PhDs and stuff like that can, you know, they may have some more, you know, perfectly accurate story, you know, information. But uh, I just wanted to mention that because like I said, you know, I like telling stories, and they're true stories. De they're definitely true stories, and most of the information on this is pretty, probably pretty fair, good. You know, for example, that whole story about Adam and Noah, and, you know, I, that's just my story. I've never read that anywhere. 
where Adam created a, a civilization, a Stone Age civilization during the last Ice Age. And they uh, built, uh, you know, all these stone cities all over the world. And then when the Ice Age ended and the sea level rose 300 feet and it not wiped out, you know, most of the, you know, the big coastal cities were destroyed and the whole civilization collapsed into a dark age. And now the civilization that we have now is the civilization founded by Noah. And, uh, and the one where we had horses and cattle, it was all mostly agriculture. He, he, Noah founded the agricultural revolution. It started at Gobekli Tepe, Noah and his kids and Abraham, and you know, Abraham was there associated with that school. It was a big university. And they actually started civilization there. And it spread out across the world. And, uh, but now, uh, you know, so that's our present civilization. But no, I never read that anywhere. That's just my, if I put all these different stories together, that's what I can, uh, you know, that's okay. That makes the, what, how do, how do you put this together? And what is, what, how do you put the, the natural history together with the, the biblical stories? How does that work out and make sense? And that's what I came up with. And, uh, you know, the fact that we find these big stone cities underwater off the coast of Egypt and India and everywhere all around the world. Plus, we have all these big, huge cities, Peru and, you know, uh, uh, Cambodia's got one in it, you know, Egypt and, you know, the pyramids and everything. So we've got all these big cities that are underwater so there was something going on during the last ice age where they were building big cities and then when sea level rose and after the ice age ended they all got wiped out so that's that's the way i could be totally wrong or you know maybe i'm right in the big sense but the details i are different you know all that but the story i tell is is just my perspective of it and so don't expect every little detail to be perfectly accurate. It's just a story. Read the stories and along with other scientific journals and articles and different things like I've read many hundreds and hundreds of scientific journals about psychology and physics and all kinds of different stories. So, and enjoy the stories. Because it's, I, I want it to be an entertaining education. I got to work on the entertaining part, you know. I don't know. I'm probably it's probably kind of not very entertaining. It's probably kind of boring actually, listening to me just talk. That's why I'm trying to find other people that want to. Uh, we can have like a conversation on video. We'd have to figure out how to make the videos. But I can remember one time when I was a kid, one of my friends complaining about another one of my friends. And I was kind of like, oh, I, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't really say anything about it. I just kind of went on about my business and I didn't really confront him about that. I don't know if that was a mistake or not, but the point is a lot of this argument about different things that are going on in life on earth today, it's like, I, I agree that the USA and the United States is a great nation. It's a great civilization. It's a, uh, I like the American philosophy. I'm, you know, the United States is my favorite nation. And, um, you know, and so I'm pretty, I'm a very, I'm a nationalist when it comes to the United States. I, I like the United States and I want it to prosper and, you know, I want everybody to be fine. You know, I don't want to fight anybody. I, you know, I, I, if today, I don't think, I do think the United States is exceptional in the sense of, you know, this whole idea of the rule of law and transforming the rule of law, you know, the rule of man, the rule of kings and the elite ruling, replacing the elite ruling class with the rule of law you know, and democracy and human rights. And that is, you know, we the thing is, 
we may not even be the very best at that these days. We're just the first. We started it back in 1776. You know, when the whole the democracy and human rights have swept across the world. Most nations in the world are ruled by democracy. You know, and I watched it happen. You know, a lot of, not all of it, but I didn't, you know, this last 50 years, I've been watching it and it's been spreading. There, you know, I mean, when I was a kid in high school, the United States ruled most of the world by military dictatorship, you know, and and at a certain point, one of our presidents said, no more, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to, you know, we, and we, we're going to support democracy around the world. And that's what we did. And uh, that's a, a great thing. And democracy swept around the world. And um, so I'm, I'm for, that's a good thing. You know, and now we're kind of facing another one of the civilizations on Earth, and they're a great civilization too, and they're a lot bigger than we are. It's kind of, you know, I don't know. They might have a different idea about how civilization should be run. They they like the rule of man, and uh, uh, you know, I don't agree with that. I like the rule of law and free enterprise. You know, self determination, individual. You know, the whole, my theory about what's good and right is, first of all, submission to God is the true nature of freedom. That's actually what freedom is, is submission to God. And um, once we practice that in our lives, the next most important, most significant feature of human nature and civilization is family. You know, and the, and the man is the head of the family Men and women are equal, you know, but the man is the head of the family, and that's just the way it is, you know. And uh, but the woman, the wife, and the mother is just as important as the man, and she has other responsibilities that are just as important as the man has responsibilities, and the the wife has responsibilities, and they all need to be wor working together as a team. And mothers and fathers, you know, children depend on the mother and father. They need both a mother and a father to grow up into a healthy, civilized human being. There is no, uh, there, there are exceptions, but there's no alternative. You know, the exception is if one of the parents dies for some reason, you know, and so then you know, you'll have to fix that. And there's way, you know, but the whole idea, this whole idea that women can raise kids by themselves is just not true. And this, and what they're trying to do, what, you know, in the United States, what's going on is they're trying to replace the father with the state. You know, they're trying to drive the father out of the home and replace him with the state. And that is a terrible idea, and it's causing terrible problems in our society. And I've been watching it my whole life. I, I know, I, I, you know, I don't need no doctor or teacher or anybody else to tell me what I see with my own eyes. You know, you, you got these one people, one group of people that they scream and how much they hate the United States, and then they com complain because they're not very successful in life. Well, I'll tell you something, if you hate the United States, you're not going to be very successful here. You know, we have the greatest system ever invented by man. It completely transformed human nature and civilization. It is so successful and it works and it's a good system. And one thing everybody needs to know is both capitalism and democracy both depend on religion. You know, uh, religion is, you know, the people who created the United States were religious people. And they, it, it was created by religious people for religious people. And the people got their morals from their religion, not from the state. And what's going on right now is the state's trying to re, re take over and replace religion with the state. And that's just, it will never work. And it's not acceptable. It's, it's in fact, it's a, a corruption of human nature and civilization. Because, uh, you know, God is the king of mankind, all mankind. And he's the king of kings. Um, you know, it's not so much, you know, they're not, because 
God created kings too. And if some countries want to have a king, then that's fine. You know, uh, God's okay with that, I think. And, uh, but I don't know if it's, if kings are necessary. You know, I kind of agree with the whole Western philosophy of there won't be any, we won't allow kings in the Western hemisphere. I kind of like that idea. I just like, I like the American philosophy. I, I, you know, those people, my parents were busy partying and having a good time and it was all fine. I was partying too, but I read and I learned my values from the founding fathers of the United States. I read their writings. I know what they said and it's a great philosophy and I agree with it. And, um, I also, you know, I studied all the religions, you know, more recently I studied all the religions and uh, I agree with them. I've learned they're all basically saying the same thing. Each one says it in a you know, different way, according to the culture where it was revealed and all that, you know, because the, the circumstances were totally different. You know, when Moses was here, the people lived in tents. So they had pretty strict laws and harsh penalties for crimes because there, there was no, you couldn't lock in, there was no jail. There's no such thing as a jail when everybody lives in tents. And so later on, when they were building brick houses, then they could lock people in prison instead of cutting their hands off for, for stealing, you know. So, you know, um, what I've learned is the American system and now this you know, the Baha'i faith and the one world civilization. And I like, I liked, I was a big fan of the United Nations before I found out about the Baha'i faith. The world government just makes sense to me. You know, it's kind of like the next, you know, America, the American Revolution was this huge wave of progress in human nature and civilization and human rights and, you know, everything economics and technology and science and all that. And now the United Nations is another even gigantic, you know, it will dwarf what Western civilization accomplished in the 20th century, you know, during this 19th, 21st century. The United Nations, well, what the United Nations accomplishes in the 21st century is it will dwarf what Western civilization accomplished during the 20th century. And what they, Western civilization accomplished a lot. It, it did a lot. There's no doubt about that. You know, and, and a lot of things, you know, it's one thing that I haven't really talked too much about is the influence that Islam had on Western civilization. Because that, that period that they called the Dark Age, you know, after the Roman Empire fell and the world was pretty much ruled by the church, you know, everybody wants to talk, oh, I call that the dark age because nothing happened. Well, no, actually there was millions and millions of people lived lives of spirituality and they, they that's what they did. That was normal. And they were spiritual and they were probably pretty happy most of the time. You know, but history, kind of like the news, likes to focus on what the terrible things that happen, you know, wars, crime, everything like that. So history kind of tends to do the same thing. So then at a certain point, Islam started encroaching on the Christian areas and that kind of riled the Christians up and they started having pogroms and, uh, you know, and what do they call those things where they went down to Israel, you know, and, you know, trying to teach the faith, you know, and, uh, but, you know, the, the Muslims introduced algebra. I mean, their civilization was a great civilization, you know, and I'm not so, but the Christians fought back because they didn't want to be Muslim and they, so they fought against it. And out of that interaction between Islam and Christianity comes the Enlightenment, the Reformation and the Enlightenment. And so Christianity blossomed and can, you know, and the whole civilization and that was, and that was because of the influence of Islam on, in, and Christianity. It was kind of, you know, because it was the Christians were doing it. It's just that they were instigated. They were, pre, they were satisfied with the status quo 
for many hundreds of years before that, you know. And, uh, but when the Muslims came in and started teaching this new religion, they, they kind of wild up the Christians. And, and so, it, you know, a lot of different, you know, because you got to remember, there's always millions of different agendas going on at all at the same time. You know, everybody's got their own agenda. And all these mixed together and you come up with a civilization. And so that's going on and the human race is evolving all the time, you know, and it's natural and waves of progress are happening all the time, you know, and and we kind of, the United States is kind of like one of the greatest things that ever happened. The Christian, it was like the, you know, the Christian civilization was is the ideal as the United States. And then they created the United Nations, which is kind of very similar to the United Nations States. I mean, it's the same concept with the, you know, the Charter of the United State Nations is very similar to the Constitution of the United States. And the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is very similar to the Declaration, of, or no, not the Declaration of Independence, the uh, Bill of Rights, you know, and the amendments to the Constitution. You know, and they're all, and so they set up this system of the rule. Well, you got to have rules. You know, the ships at sea have to have rules that they all follow, so they don't run into each other. You know, and we need the government to regulate the fishing and stuff like that, so we don't need all the fish. And then our kid, our kid, grandkids starve and stuff like that. We have to manage. There's so many humans alive on Earth right now that we have to pay attention. Human civilization is terraforming earth from a wilderness into a beautiful garden and that's a good thing and so that's what we need to keep doing and we need to uh and to me it's like this wonderful adventure you know i'd like to study history and read all these stories national geographic and all these scientific journals about what they're discovering in space, you know, and dark energy and dark matter and everything, you know, and it's very fascinating. All they're watching, I like to watch the videos from these robots they have up, up on Mars. And we had one fly past Pluto here a couple of years ago. We got some headed out to the asteroids. We've already had a couple of asteroid, you know, flybys, you know, and experiments, you know, and taking pictures and videos of, of these asteroids up close. And we're just getting started. I mean, that's just our very first, you know, like, wow, what's up there, you know? And we're learning and we're gonna, you know, it's gonna get better and we're gonna get better and better at it, you know? And that's a great thing. And then the other thing, we gotta get rid of the poverty. There can't be any poverty. The only way to get rid of crime is to get rid of poverty. I, I do agree with that idea. You know, and you people have to be productive being unproductive is not healthy. It's, you know, it's not healthy to be unproductive. You, you cannot, it doesn't even, even if you were rich and you were born with millions of dollars, you still have to be productive to be healthy. And that, because that's human nature. That's part of human nature. And um, so be productive and uh, find a niche for yourself. Find something you like doing and get really good at it and trade that skill in the one worldwide free marketplace, you know, and, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep working. Don't give up. <laughs> you know, things can get pretty tough at times. I can tell you from my own personal experience, they get tough. And, um, so yeah, just keep working on it. And, uh, we've got to do, we got to eliminate, completely eliminate poverty. Uh, crime, we'll, we'll, we'll eliminate that too. You know, we, we've learned so much about human nature and human consciousness uh, uh, that we can f repair. The, the main thing that's going to solve the problem is going to be our spirituality and our one common faith of all mankind. And everybody understands what that is. And it comes from God. It doesn't come from any human being. You know, I don't get to create, choose the religion of God. The, God chooses the religion of God. That's the whole point of it. You know, man-made religion is just a man-made delusion, you know. And that includes me making up my own religion. That's a man-made delusion. God makes the religion of God, and it is what it is. And 
And so whatever that is. And, um, you know, so spirituality and family and productivity. Another really important feature of life is a holistic human being is uh, nutrition and uh, exercise and getting keeping your physical, you know, taking care of yourself, your physical self. You know, uh, the main thing, and if, 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 you know, it's really I I don't I like tall skinny girls, man. That, that those are the kind of girls I like, tall skinny girls. You know, I mean not skinny skinny, but I mean slender, good looking women. Okay, and I that's just a fact. I, that's what I like, and I think it's kind of sad that, and I'm not. Hey, I'm just as guilty as anybody. I'm overweight. Actually, I'm probably not overweight at this point, but I'm, you know, I'm not the big, best specimen of human health. But what I'm saying is this obesity crisis that we have going on in North America is a result of the food that we're eating. The companies, these corporate food production, they take the, you know, in order to make more money, they take the nutrients out of the food. So it'll last for a long time on the shelves because once you kill the food, once you harvest the food, it immediately starts to spoil. That's natural and it's just part of life on earth. That's nature. And so what the food companies, corporations do is they take all the nutrients out to slow that process down and add chemicals, preservatives, and different things like that, flavors, and, you know, artificial flavors and stuff, and colors, and chemicals. They add chemicals in there to make it look good and taste good. But they took all the nutrients out so it wouldn't spoil. So people eat more of the food because they're hungry, because they're not getting the nutrients they need. So they're eating this food and it's just, and so we're eating way more food than we need to. Plus we're not getting the exercise because we have machines doing all the labor. So most of the people are sitting around working on a computer or something. So you have to get some exercise, which is a good, Qigong is the, in my favorite exercise. I, I think Qigong is the best exercise ever. You know, and they're, you know, walking and jogging, it's all good. You know, but that's my favorite is Qigong. And, uh, but, you know, so take good care of yourself. And um, it's, uh, you know, life on earth is an adventure. And we're all in this together, man. It's the whole entire human race. We're all one family. We need to take care of each other. We need to help each other. And, uh, you know, Keep improving yourself. You know, I got, you know, I figure it's part of the reason I struggle so much is because of my character defects. You know, I, I just got my, these character defects and imperfections, you know, everybody's, most people are not perfect and they have character defects and those character defects hold you back. And if you could let go of the character defects and move on and you could prosper a lot better. And that goes for everybody, you know. It's, uh, you know, let go of those, the habits. You know, cultivate good, productive, spiritual habits in yourself and in everyone around you. You know, try to work on making the world a better place. Work on improving yourself. Life on Earth is a never-ending process of self-improvement. And it's fun. It's an adventure. I just wanted to make another video. I'm actually in the process of making a video about, you know, making videos is one good way. You know, it's a good skill to learn. And maybe your main trade, or it could be just a skill that you're learning in order to support whatever your trade is, you know, because you could be taught teaching people about something totally unrelated to making videos but or you could just be a professional videographer you know and whatever so you know it, and that's what I'm kind of doing working on right now is a little, a little bit of uh, how to make a video 
how to use KDN Live to put it all together. You know, you'd make your video on your phone. At least that's what I'm doing. Then you have to get it uploaded. You know, I, I don't know. I've never been able to get it to go directly from my phone to my computer. And I probably could do that if I just learned how to do it. But I haven't been able. I usually just let it go up to my Microsoft OneDrive. And uh, it takes a little while. I just wait for it to get uploaded to, to OneDrive. And then I download it onto my computer. And then I, and then I can make, and then I load everything and I get all my little pictures and videos and whatever else that I want to put in the story in my, uh, in a directory. And then I put it all into KDN Live and put it together. And I still don't know a lot about KDN Live. I've just been making these videos real fast and I haven't really like dug into and learned all the different features of KDN Live, but I know it's it's pretty powerful software and I probably should get in there and learn, you know, and I can change like that one video right there in the middle. I'd like to replace that with something else, uh, the list of, uh, Anyway, you know, there's, you know, rearrange. I would like to be able to rearrange. I know you can rearrange what you see on, on KDN Live. And I would, there's something I want to do. I haven't figured, I haven't taken the time to figure out how to do it. And that's something I can work on doing. But so just keep working, keep telling stories, keep making videos and, and writing stories. I need to get back to writing stories again, you know, because I've been making these videos and I haven't been writing very much. And uh, get your business plan written, get your financial accounting documents, you know, set up and arrange, you know, and working in, so you can use them to run your business and uh, get all the, your patents and, and, uh, different things like that, licenses and permits and and uh, trademarks, things like that. Get all that stuff done and ready. And so you have your business and you can, uh, you know, build a business, make it a profitable, make it high performance, make it very high quality, very as, as, as high quality as you can. Right now, mine are very rough dress. I mean, like I said, I'm not Hollywood and I'm not Harvard. But I did the value I do this. My stories are very valuable, and hopefully soon I'll. Get, I'm trying to build a team at this point. I figure I decided it's not the may do trying to do all this by myself is not necessarily the best strategy, so I'm trying to attract other people to get involved and help me and add and hopefully I'll be able to find somebody that's a lot smarter than I am with on the computer stuff, and they can help me you know, answer a lot of questions I have about the computer stuff and uh, help me go forward from where I'm, the progress I made. I made a lot of progress, you know, just doing this all by myself. And I think having teammates might help me a lot with the whole traffic. I'm at the stage where I'm trying to attract traffic and I, from what I can see, I've got virtually, you know, a very tiny amount of traffic. I got some traffic, but it's not enough, even close to being enough to be able to start working on monetizing the website. You know, you do your content, traffic, pre-sale, and monetize. And so I'm on the traffic. <laughs> you know, I've got some pretty good content. I, I believe my content's pretty good. Like I said, you know, the style and the pretty, you know, making it pretty part, I can, it, it could definitely use a lot of improvement. I, I admit that. But the content is good and it's valuable. So I need to work on, that's why I could, I wish I could find somebody that's a little bit better artist than I am, you know, a graphic artist. You know, I wish I could find somebody that is willing to work on this. You know, and it wouldn't hurt to have more personalities other than mine in the storytelling part. You know, I don't want anybody that's just totally, I don't want this to be, to be an argument, but I am very open, you know, I'm open-minded. 
you know, I had a friend one time tell me to be open-minded, but not so open-minded that your brains fall off. <laughs> and I, that's a great, I totally agree with that. You know, be open-minded, but not so open-minded that your brains fall off. Start with gathering a team. Work on and meeting people and working together with other people on your project. And and you can either both work on the same problem or, or all work on the same problem. Or you could each have your own projects and each one would be doing their own little thing. But they would work together and help each other do that. It's one one kind of easy model. I don't know if that will work. I've never really noticed anybody else trying to do that, but you know that's kind of one way of doing it. I don't know. You know, like I said, I'm open to suggestions, and I'm I've been kind of I've even got a story on here from a long time ago where I tried to say help wanted, you know, <laughs> and I mean it. I need help, man, help. But anyway, I'm having fun. So thanks for listening and watching and, you know, I, I need, I, I gotta, I, I need to attract some income. You know, I need income. I can't do this, you know, without, I, I have to be able to, I don't have a lot of money to uh, pay my bills. So I've either got to get a job, which that's kind of my fallback position. And I'd be happy to, I'm working on getting a job that would be a really good job for me. But I really wish I could just work on this. That's what I want. That's my dream. This is my dream is to work on this and be Aota, you know, the holistic healer and teacher. And I want to make the world a better place. I want to help you be the best person you can be. And I want to help us all make the world a better place, the whole world. I want the earth to be a safe, clean, and decent place to live. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what the young kids or kind of these next generations are going to do to challenge themselves. I'm sure they're going to figure out something. But what I'm trying to do is make sure that it's not poverty or war, or crime, or anything like that. Those things will be extinct. And, you know, disease will be rare. I mean, it probably won't be completely extinct, but it'll be very rare. And whenever somebody gets sick, we could just fix that, you know. Kind of like kids that are born with one, two legs or something like that, you know, with no legs or arms or something. You just give them, make some artificial arms. And give them some artificial arms and figure it out because we're already there you know on that part but we can do a lot with the brain you know i'm not sure we're going to be able to heal every brain disorder but we could probably heal a lot of them you know so this you know everybody wants to say oh it's a terrible thing they're you know what do they call it transhumanism is this terrible thing you know uh, it could be, you know, we definitely need the state to be, you know, regulating that well. But, I, it, you know, transhumanism is a great science and technology, you know, to be able to, because I remember when I was a kid, there was this one girl that had no arms. She was born with no arms. She had these little tiny appendages on her shoulders but they weren't you couldn't call that an arm and um even back then she had this machine it was a big mechanical machine that she could put on her shoulder but that's no, no it's, it's gotta be we can these days we're almost at a point where we can just put two artificial arms on that person you know we and that's a good thing there's no doubt about it where all these wounded warriors coming back from the wars and stuff, you know, we could fix them up pretty, you know, we know how to do that now. And that's a good thing. So, you know, but this, we don't want anybody, you know, there's got to be some, some laws and regulations about that. You know, not, uh, you know, privacy, privacy. We need to protect our privacy and make sure that, uh, 
you know, the, we have very severe penalties for violating people's privacy. And, you know, and the people don't use, you know, we want artificial intelligence. We want to use artificial intelligence to liberate the people of Earth, not, you know, hurt us around like animals or, you know, anything like that. And if we, so we, we that's why it's so important that we have systems in place that prevent anyone from trying to boss anybody else around. That's That's got to stop. It's got to come to an end. That's the old way, the whole alpha male is going to tell everybody else what to do. We're not going to do that anymore. That's what the American Revolution is all about. That's what, you know, everything, you know, the that's what the Covenant of Baha'u'llah is about. You know, that's, you know, we, human, God is the king of every single human being. And we we don't need anybody hurting us around or, to, you know, bossing us around. And we do need laws. You know, freedom is lawful. It's not lawless. And we need police and people need to respect the police. And we, we need to, you know, that's, that's a good, you know, that's civilization. That's human nature and civilization, you know? And uh, it's all fun. It's good, you know? Thanks for watching and peace be with you.